If you're anything like I was when I started my first job out of school, two of my earliest questions were how does leveling work and how do I get promoted from software engineer one to software engineer two. Since then, I've been promoted twice to software engineer two, and I wanted to provide my perspective on promotions and leveling as someone who's still relatively early in career. I'm going to split this video into two parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about what I consider to be the three main pillars of what you need to think about when it comes to leveling and promotions. And in the second part, I'm going to talk about my own experience going to Software Engineer 2, uh, some concrete steps of things that I actually did, because a lot of the advice I've seen online is pretty generic and not very actionable. And what I did to get to Software Engineer 2 is by no means a blueprint. There's a million different ways to get from Software Engineer 1 to Software Engineer 2 but it should at least provide a little bit more transparency of what that process looked like for me. All right, so the expectations and responsibilities of you as a software engineer is definitely going to vary greatly depending on your level, but we can abstract away a lot of that nuance by thinking of things in terms of three main pillars, influence, autonomy, and consistency. And to get started, let's dive into this from the perspective of someone who's a software engineer one, they're fresh out of school or very early in career. So as a software engineer one, uh, generally speaking, expectations are going to be pretty low. Your scope of influence is going to be very narrow. If you're on a good team, they'll invite your beginner's mindset and your fresh eyes when you have different ways of doing things or suggestions of things that maybe they've been doing for a long time and could you know benefit from some changes. A not so good team is probably just going to tell you to do what you're told. They don't want to hear about any of your thoughts. Uh, they simply want you there just to do the work. Your autonomy or your sense of independence is also probably going to be pretty low at first, although if you're someone at a startup or just a very small company, you'll probably get a little bit more of this autonomy than someone at a larger company. You'll probably be able to handle small tasks by yourself, but for anything that's a little bit bigger or more challenging, you'll either need help from people who are more senior, or they might just completely tackle those things for you, and you just don't need to think about that yet. Consistency is a little bit more within your control because a lot of that comes down to just putting in the time and the effort and the due diligence of actually making sure that you're putting in the work and doing things the correct way. But that being said, it's still expected that you will make some mistakes and you'll need some course correction and the expectations around consistency are naturally going to be lower than someone who's been at the company or just in the industry for several years. So naturally, all of these things are expected to increase as you move up through the levels, but not all at the same rate and also not linearly through those levels. For example, becoming reasonably consistent is something that can still happen while you're a software engineer one. And honestly, it's probably a prerequisite before you can even get to Software Engineer 2 that you are consistently doing things to a reasonably high standard. And becoming reasonably consistent doesn't mean that you never make mistakes or introduce bugs because that happens at all levels. Uh, what it really means is just that you're doing things to the standard of what is expected. And over time, you'll learn what that is and the difference between that and actually being perfect. For autonomy, this is huge, especially at lower levels. As a software engineer too, you're going to be expected to be able to resolve bugs and do small to medium sized features by yourself without a whole lot of help from other people. You can't do anything and everything, but you are pretty self-sufficient at that point. But once you get up to senior, staff, or principal, depending on how leveling works at your company, uh, the expectation is that your technical competency is probably just about at the point where you could handle anything that would be thrown at you. Now, that doesn't mean that you always do sit down and solve it all by yourself. But if you needed to, you probably could, and you're able to work through most kinds of problems. At these levels, system design and architectural concerns become much more important, though. Uh, are we thinking about scale? Are we thinking about reliability? Are we thinking about how the whole system's going to fit together if we have something like microservices that all need to interact? Are we thinking about how this is going to be distributed to customers? These are different kinds of problems than what I'm used to solving as a software engineer one and now as a software engineer two, but I'm starting to get more and more so introduced to these things. Uh, and I'm going to have to keep doing that as I move up through the levels and become a senior or principal engineer. And for the third pillar, influence, this probably isn't going to be a big factor for you, especially at the lower levels. If you're software engineer one or a software engineer two, you're probably not going to be influencing large groups of people or other teams or just other projects that are going on within your org. But your scope of influence and how you leverage that becomes much more important as you get into those higher levels, especially senior and principal and anything beyond that. Regardless of your technical competency, it's nearly impossible to get to levels like staff or principal without extending your scope. You'll be playing a really large role in the direction of your product, whether it's taking large work items and splitting that into smaller pieces and prioritizing it and making sure that the right people are working on those pieces, 
or working with other teams to make sure that we're collaborating in the right places, or just getting buy-in from leadership about the project as a whole. Now, obviously I am not a staff or a principal engineer, but my understanding is it's not enough to just be really good at writing code or at designing systems to get into those higher levels. Uh, you need to have something important to say and you need to have that level of influence where other people will actually listen to what you have to say and you're able to guide the direction of your own project and potentially other projects if you're operating at those kinds of levels. Okay, so all of that delved into what it means to actually move through the levels and all the things that you need to think about. But now I want to transition in the second part of this video into what this process looked like for me. Because if you're someone who's trying to get promoted from Software Engineer 1 to Software Engineer 2, I get that it's probably not super helpful for me to say just have more autonomy, be more consistent, and have more influence, and voila, you'll get your promotion in no time. So with that being said, here's a few things that served me well in my own journey from Software Engineer 1 to Software Engineer 2. One of the notes that I got back when I was a Software Engineer 1 was that some of the work items I was taking on were more so suited to a Software Engineer 2 or even a Senior Engineer level. I was lucky to be able to stretch to pick up tasks where it wasn't entirely clear whether or not they were within my wheelhouse. Instead of just assuming that I wasn't going to be able to handle those tasks, I was given the chance to actually try them out and to find out if I actually could handle those tasks. Some managers will be really supportive of this and they'll help you do it. They want to see you succeed and grow and they want to help push you and others won't. But it's great to be the one to actually take the initiative and to look for those opportunities instead of just waiting for your manager or your teammates to bring them to you. Of course, naturally, it's important that you can deliver. If you're constantly picking up really hard work and then you can't actually do it, that's probably not going to help your case in getting promoted but that all comes down to your individual skill level. Like I mentioned in the first part of this video, the expectations of scope of influence are generally pretty low at more junior levels, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't or can't try to influence your team anyway. For me, two examples of this was leadership around learning and customer outreach. Continuous learning and growth is a huge part of being a better software engineer, and it's a big part of my own personal life, and I lead a lot of initiatives within my team to make sure that other engineers have a great learning culture. And in terms of customer outreach, I wanted to create great onboarding resources for new users, so I decided to take the experience that I had with making technical videos like this and to make some video tutorials that would help anyone who was just getting started with their tool to make that process just a little bit easier. Now, you're not going to find either of these listed anywhere as criteria for needing to reach the next level, but I think the broader point here is having that agency to look around and notice areas of opportunity of how you can make a difference to make things better, and then really leaning into that and trying to make a difference instead of just trying to do the bare minimum check off a box, see where you can really have some influence. And that's going to not completely replace, but it's really going to help bolster the impact you're going to have with your coding on a day-to-day -day basis. Your code is not going to be perfect as a software engineer one, or as a software engineer two, or frankly at any level, but looking back at the code I was writing on day one on the job versus the code that I'm writing today, there's a few things that I can probably point to that you should work on getting better at and becoming more consistent with before you're ready to move on to the next level. Number one, things for the most part work. You're able to take a problem and translate it into a solution, and you're not checking in half broken code. This probably goes without saying, but that's probably a prerequisite for moving on to software engineer two. Number two, you're following the right conventions. Some of this is going to be team specific, just, you know, your team's way of doing things. But this is also just learning how to write clean code and learning about the correct design patterns that you should follow in certain situations. In college, you were probably able to get away with hacking things together. In industry, not as much. And number three, your code is properly tested and designed for users, not you. Now, some companies put a lot less emphasis on automated testing. I've already said my piece about that and why I think it's important to be doing automated testing, but if that pertains to you, at the very least, you should be doing the right kinds of manual testing on your code. It's more than just thinking about the basic cases. It's also thinking about edge cases. It's thinking about real world use, and that's a good way to make sure you're checking in high quality stuff and thinking about things from the user's perspective and not just the developer's perspective. Okay, I know that's not a checklist. It's kind of impossible to come up with a checklist that would pertain to everyone in the industry who's trying to move from software engineer one to software engineer two. But the very least, my hope is if you focus your energy in those couple of directions, that should be enough to make sure you're doing all the right things to get promoted from software engineer one to software engineer two when the time comes. 
And that's another thing that I want to mention before we wrap here, which is it's really important to have patience with this. Obviously, getting promoted is super exciting, but if you get promoted before you're ready, that can be super stressful. And it also might mean that you end up with more responsibility than you can reasonably handle. I was at a software engineer one level for two years, and by the time I moved to software engineer two, I felt pretty ready to step into that next role. But if I had been promoted after one year, that might have actually done more harm for me than help, because while that sounds better, like I'm moving at a faster pace, I'm already getting promoted after one year, I don't think I was ready for software engineer two after one year. You can't always control your promotion velocity. It depends on business needs and your manager and your team and a whole bunch of things that you might not be able to do anything about. But the one thing that you always can control is the work that you're doing and making sure that that work is as good as it possibly can be. And the one thing that you should never do is to not do your best work because you feel like you're underleveled, even though it might be incredibly frustrating because you feel like you should be at the next level and you haven't gotten your promotion yet. If you're software engineer one and you think you deserve to be a software engineer two, the best advice I can give is to act like one. Don't hold yourself back and do subpar work because you think you'll work harder once you get that promotion. You have to prove that you can operate at that level before you get promoted to that level. And sometimes you might end up in a team or a company where you feel stuck and like you really should be at the next level and you're just not getting promoted. It's a great excuse to look around and see what else is out there. Just remember that levels aren't everything. We tend to put a lot of importance on them, but there's a lot more to your career to think about than your job title. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.